Sports is brought to you by All Out Auto Repair, home of the $46 Saskatchewan and $66 Alberta Safety Inspection. Your complete automotive repair. Moses joins us now with a look at sports, and we're talking wrestlers basketball, and both teams have been doing phenomenal. Yeah, no kidding. They've been uh, great, like you say. <laughs> Seven games in a row uh, for the uh, Lakeland women and the men, of course, 20 and 0, which <laughs> just boggles my mind, but it, it's been a great job for them. But we also have a volleyball team in there, too, mm. that's done a really great job. They've been on a great stretch of late, and they're going to provincials as well. Wow. It's a team that's had high hopes for a deep playoff push and nearly saw their dreams shatter after a first dismal season or first half of the season. Emmett Murphy reports on the Lakeland Rustlers women's volleyball team and their incredible late season surge and postseason ambitions. Celebrations like this were few and far between for the Rustlers early in the season. The women didn't win a single game in November, losing six straight matches. All that's a distant memory for the women as they have now won seven straight to grab the final playoff position in the ACAC North. It's hard to believe that watching that game tape that it's the same team almost. And we know that we can look at each other on the court and feel confidence in each other and that's nice to see. This past weekend's dominating qualifying win against Kings is an indication of the confidence and momentum the women have. But their toughest task still lies ahead. Their first round match is against the number two ranked team in the nation the Mount Royal Cougars. Despite having lost only two matches all year, the wrestlers believe they can throw the Cougars off their game. If we can serve tough, if we can put them out of system, they'll be like any other team. Um, you put any team out of system because they can't pass, it uh, makes it really tough on, on those league leaders to be able to put the ball away. We need to serve tough. Like, if they're out of system, things don't always go so well for them, so just need to serve really aggressive. The green and gold lost back-to-back -back matches against last year's conference champions during that dreadful November stretch. But the ladies say things have tilted in their favor since then. We've thrown around some different players and we've bought it, brought in Bryn now. So we have a vet libero that we're so lucky to have. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a good game. The playoff opener gets underway 3 o'clock Friday at Mount Royal. Emmett Murphy, Newcap Sports. Moving on to basketball and the wrestlers, men's and ladies will be getting things going tonight in their first round playoff matches. The ladies are gearing up for the St. Trojans. The Trojans have a lethal backcourt and Rachel Caputo and Jordan Rabbit. The two teams met back in November with the wrestlers beating Sate 68 to 57. Now things have changed since then, but the wrestlers are confident they can match up well against Sate. We've learned a lot from that, looking at the tape. You know, we've gotten a lot better and they have two, so it does help and it does give us a little bit of confidence, but you know, at this point in the season, everybody wants to play good and everybody will be going after it. I think the girls are confident that we played pretty well last time we played them. I know they've made some changes, they'll be a lot better, but we've also grown as a team. So um, just being familiar with what they do scouting wise and who their key players are, I think the girls are in a comfort zone going in, so hopefully we can play off that. Good news for the ladies as well. Amy Warbick was selected ACAC First Team North Conference All-Star as well as Amanda Carlton. She was Second Team North All-Star Conference. A great accomplishment for both ladies. Now going to the programs as you see there, the women State Trojans taking on the Lakeland Wrestlers. This is a best of three series. It goes on tonight at 6 o'clock. For the men, Grant McEwen has the distinct, uh, distinction of actually losing out to Lakeland in the first round. Who knows? But obviously when you got a team that's 20 and 0, the odds for Grant McEwen are slim to none. They will play at 8 o'clock tip off. That is game one again and game two will be in McEwen Friday night. Moving on, Junior B playoffs. Game four as we have the Lloyd Bandits taking on Vermillion. Now the Bandits up 2-1 in this series looking to clinch it. They're down 2-1 in this game until there. Chris Romanchuk roofing it for his fourth of the playoffs. We're tied at two. Third period, the puck deflects right to Jeff Olsen. His shot will hit the crossbar. Then the Tigers, Brett Pickford takes it in himself, gets by one D-man and drives to the net. He also takes Easton Oborowski with him. Oborowski shaken up, but he would be all right. Late stages of the game, Kyle Stark can't corral the bouncing puck. Tigers fail to clear. Anthony Renier nearly wins it. Goes off the post. We would need double overtime for this one, and Oborowski would come up big, stopping Brendan Payne point blank. Moments later, Oborowski flashing the leather. 
Wow, you are denied, my friend. The Tigers still applying more pressure. A scramble in front. The puck is loose and Payne thinks he's got a goal, but Oborowski comes up with another huge save. And that would lead to this. Midway through the double overtime, Andre Broadway collects the rebound and scores. He's on the second attempt. Bandits win 3-2 and take the series three games to one. Those two saves, that I don't know how I got those. They're kind of halfway under my pad, halfway didn't know if I had it. So find out I had it and got the whistle and get the boys some extra air. It was good. They come out hard in that se second overtime and uh, we're throwing pucks all over on him and he was just finding ways to make saves and, and it, it got the boys pumped and gave us time to, to get the puck in the right spot. And we were rolling all four lines basically all game until pretty much overtime so that was nice. Gave uh, us a break, every guy on the team and you know we just dumped it in, took the body and just I don't know, got some greasy goals but a goal is a goal. And what a series. They'll take on Cold Lake uh, next week or this weekend coming up. And that is your first look at Sports Gerard is up next with weather. Stay tuned. Sports is brought to you by Denim Chrysler. To really experience a world-class Dodge and Chrysler automobile, you have to drive it. Visit Denim Chrysler Lloydminster today. Players in the MLB have reported to spring camp this past week, and it also started right here in the border city. On this week's edition of Superstar Next Door, Matt Schumann shows us a player who has set her goals to a high standard. Daisy Patekin wrapped up her second year with the Blues Pee Wee team with one of her best seasons to date. Brad Zare says she's one of the most effective players every time she's on the diamond. She's a rock-solid uh, third-base player. Uh, she's got a wicked arm to get it over to first and uh, she's decided to come out and work really hard this winter on her pitching to bring it to a new level and we're really excited about uh, her being um, part of our U16 team this year that uh, gets to play Provincials right here at home. This past summer, Daisy helped her zone finish fourth at the Saskatchewan Aboriginal Summer Games and what makes it that much better is that she was playing at the Bantam level at a position she has never played before. It was exhausting because <laughs> uh, I never actually played the catcher before. So it was like my first year playing catcher. It was uh, very fun. We played a lot of good teams. Daisy may be heading into her first year of Bantam this summer, but with the success she has already had, Daisy is hoping that one day she could represent Team Canada. I've always wanted to like play with Team Canada and stuff like that. Like. I haven't actually seen any native players play on Team Canada, so yeah, I, I want to be the first. <laughs> if she continues to to push herself at uh, at the pace and consistency that she is, um, you know, she's she's a strong, smart player, and uh, I think you know, sky's the limit. Matt Schumont, New Cap Sports. Brought to you by your local BRP dealer. Power Merchants of St. Paul, North Sask of North Battleford, and Rectech Power Products of Lloydminster, your local BRP dealers.